November 18, 2013 meeting of the Regional Governing Board of the Southwest Vermont Regional Technical School District. And we always begin with public comments. Are there any public comments? All right, I'm hearing none, and seeing none, we're going to move on to our presentation this evening. Uh, Mr. Foley, uh, who teaches video production here for us, among other things, directing the play and all that, that last spring, he and his students, uh, I'm going to let him give you all the details of it, but last spring, they had an opportunity to go to Burlington to go on a uh, broadcast uh, of television because of the video that they produced and they were rewarded with this uh, opportunity to take the students there. We've made a couple of attempts to get everybody here so I apologize that it's now November before we recognize them this time Mr. Foley. Hi, so uh, this is Nick Tenbrook and uh, Nick won the silver at uh, his first year then won gold last year and then this is a commercial that the, uh, that the, uh, the Vermont Department of Health uh, sponsored, and it was a contest over the entire state. And the prize essentially was getting to go to uh, WCAX and uh, present. And so he went on, and there's an interview here and the commercial. So if you will bear with yep. this, we'll show the commercial. If you guys have any questions, of Nick. Just give you the heads up. It's like about four and a half minutes total or something like that. I think that's I think it's, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't know. Would it help to dim the lights a little? Yes. But then that's yeah. going to hurt you, though, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I think a commercial place before it, but okay. it's really nothing you do about that. Okay. <clears throat> Star Seer Bells are known just 99 cents each at participating retailers, while supplies last. Lyme disease is on the rise in Vermont. In an attempt to educate the public about Lyme and how to protect themselves from it, the health department launched a video contest. 14 is called Pick, Tick, Be Smart. Here's the video that won. Spring has sprung and the ticks are out. Here are a few tips to protect yourself against ticks and Lyme disease. Before going outside, remember to apply an effective insect repellent. Wear light-colored pants, long sleeve shirts, closely knitted socks, and remember to tuck in the clothes. While outdoors, avoid bushy areas and tall grass if possible. When back indoors, check yourself for ticks. Upon finding a tick, remove it properly and promptly. Be tick smart and protect yourself this spring and summer. For more information, visit healthvermont.gov. Well, joining me now is Nick Pembroke from Bennington. Nick and his two friends, Dakota Nab and Luke LaCroix, created that Be Tick Smart Public Service announcement. Plus, Eric Bean from the Health Department is also here. Welcome to you both. Hi. Thanks. Well, congratulations, Thank Nick. You. Thank you. Tell me why you wanted to enter this. Well, um, <laughs> it's always a matter of me trying to find new projects to do. I'm always trying to keep busy. And, um, my teacher, Mr. Foley, uh, got an email from uh, one of his colleagues saying that there's a uh, PSA contest from the Vermont Department of Health, and I thought, why not? <laughs> uh, it was also a good learning experience for me because I, you know, I knew what Lyme disease was, so I didn't quite know what it had to do with ticks, and now I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Erica, why did Nick win? I'm sure you had a lot of entries. Well, we actually had six entries, and they were all very good. And the way we judged the contest was if we actually, um, we, we had a uh, Health department staff vote, knew that they vote on them. And um, his one, and I think they use one because A, it's, it's upbeat and it gives positive messages and it tells you what you can do to prevent two fights, as well as being very creative. Right. Yeah, Nick, tell us why you chose to go with drawings rather than going outside in the woods. There's no logic behind it more than I just, <laughs> I just like puppets and I think they're relatable. I don't know. I, I could have easily done my people, real people, but who mm -hmm. hates puppets? Nobody can get puppets. Who can get puppets? I think they can get them or otherwise. <laughs> Erica, who are you trying to reach with this PSA? Well, obviously, this contest was for high school students, so we were definitely trying to reach that group, and then thinking that probably high school students would come up with something that was more relatable to other kids than, than we would at the health department. Talk about 
the problem of Lyme disease in Vermont? How big of an issue is it? Well, it's a pretty big issue, especially uh, in the southern part of our state. Um, we, we've been averaging between five and 600 cases reported a year for the last few years, and that's pretty significant. How much work did you put into this? Uh, good couple classes. Um, the biggest chunk of time it took was cutting out all the puppets and coloring them in. Right. And the other, the other difficult part was the set was just um, was two long pieces of paper on on the wall in the classroom. And we, um, I think it was Dakota was was doing the puppets, and I was I was doing the, the camera, and I had it on a dolly, and we were tracking it like that, and that that took forever. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot, but is there anything you'd like to tell the board about uh, your experience with this and with Mr. Foley? Um, this was nice because I've never really been on, uh, well, I've been on cat TV. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got to be interviewed on the real and uh, we, got to, we got there a bit early so they let us see uh, the actual news broadcast. Uh, it was about 30 minutes before our my interview, so that was. Really nice to see because it, you know, we were in a professional setting. We, we saw how they how they did things, and it was nice. Mm -hmm. Not the day after school got out, so we didn't have to. Right. We got out of school. We didn't have to get out of school to do it. And uh, my class went up as a group, and we had a great time going yeah, up to Burlington shopping, and then going to the to the interview, and then coming home. It was a great experience. Really fun. Yeah. Just an extended day in the school year. But I want to thank both of you for representing the Creative Development Center and you're doing a good job in entering it. And, oh. You seem very comfortable on TV. I wasn't. You weren't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you, you had a good, a good appearance. Um, I think you have a future in, in broadcasting. You should yeah. pursue that. Yeah. Thank you for your support. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. Okay. We're going to uh, look at the committee reports, and I'll start with the, uh, the finance committee because Ricky is not here this evening. Stephanie has passed out a. Um, well, it's kind of the agenda of how we're going to proceed through the, the budget building process. You'll notice that we had a meeting on Friday um, where at that time um, the teachers had, they had just collected all the teacher budget submissions. This is done electronically now. They submit them through their computer systems. We have a meeting coming up this uh, Wednesday. We'll be looking at those submissions as well as other um, budget generated items, the fixed uh, expenses, et cetera. And um, then we'll continue to work on those right straight through to December 16th. And we're looking to present it to the board in December and then uh, looking for a vote at, at that time. So if uh, you're interested in any of these meetings, of course, you're, you're welcome to attend. November 20th and Monday, December 6th, before our um, regular scheduled meeting on the 16th. Jim, yes. just a question. Have you heard anything about uh, teacher negotiations? No, and I asked um, 
Ricky, who is the, our, our representative mm -hmm. there, and they have not called them in yet okay. at, at all to do any... Uh, I mean, I'm asking every other board too, but I, I haven't asked this board yet. So. Okay. Because, you know, I've, I've been uh, an advocate for open negotiations. Right. So I want right. to see where that's headed. Yep. Okay. Um, the other committee that met was strategic planning. Yes. Gloria is going to give us a presentation. Yes. Well, you see the minutes in here. I'll just do the highlights. Uh, Jim Houghton uh, updated uh, us on the meetings with the Bennington Select Board. And uh, we're going to attempt to inform all parties of the budget process and scale uh, large-scale projects and anticipated costs. They hope to build better communication between the boards and assist in planning large-scale projects. So it sounds like a very positive uh, activity for the boards to get together. And then we had a discussion on what local businesses need and expect from our students at the CDC as they move into the workplace. And we suggested that we establish links to our community, businesses, and government so that we can be flexible to the needs of the area. <coughs> we talked about um, bringing, for students to bring their grades, transcript, and attendance records to job interviews. This way, uh, students need to know how it is important for them to be able to uh, learn the soft skills and reliability factors that uh, are in the business world. Students need to be able to take skills taught in CDC and then be able to apply them to their employer. So we had a good discussion on that. And then we are working on updating the philosophy and goals at CDC. And then we have a grid that we are going to be working on, which has um, the goal and then the action that we're going to be taking to meet each goal and then the resources that are available to work on this goal, the timeline, and the outcome. And we're a very hardworking committee with lots of wonderful ideas. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well attended committee. A lot of, and that's right, a lot of good ideas going across the table. I feel like we're making some progress there. Thank you, Gloria, for your, your work in that area. There were no other committees in that, right? No. no. Okay. Then we'll move on to the consent agenda. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes of the full board Hello. meeting? From Francis, second. second from Leon. Any discussion on the minutes of the meeting from the October meeting? Seeing none, then all in favor of accepting those minutes, would you please signify by raising your hand? And that is unanimous, I believe. Katie, I didn't see you. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the minutes of the finance committee meeting for October and November, and the strategic planning committee minutes. Can I have a motion to accept those? Double. Second. Okay. Same. Any discussion? Yes. Heidi. No. I'm oh, just you're voting. Right. Okay. All right. Ready. <laughs> yeah, keep moving right along. All those in favor? <laughs> okay, that's also unanimous. And we have warrants. We have payroll warrants number 9, 1015, number 10, and 1017. And um, vendor warrants number 1016. And. 1018 are included in the packet. That's right. Any, uh, can I have a motion to accept those words? So moved. Second. Okay. That time Kevin seconded. Any questions on the warrants, Ed? A couple of quick ones on both of the payroll warrants. There's an item for MG Trust. What is MG Trust? Um, it's probably a 403 <clears throat> Okay. We just recently added a new vendor that we have to. Okay, yeah. I just wasn't familiar with that organization. I also have a question on are we going to approve all these as a batch? Or yes. Separate them? Okay. Approve as a batch. On warrant 1018, 
on page five, there's a, a site consulting charge. What is that for? For the reorganization of the front office. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which will be going over in my report. <clears throat> That's it for me. Yeah, there's two of them. One for each month. I think one was prior to the arrival and one was after the arrival. I don't really just, know how they built it and paid it. They came right around the time that we were running. The last one came right around the time we were running the last so we just kind of did Any other questions? All those in favor of accepting the warrants, both payroll and vendor warrants as presented then, please signify by raising your hand. And that's unanimous too, Barb. Any questions on the cash flow statement? Revenues and expenses? Okay, action items. We have a short block that's been presented. That was in the packet as well. Um, the short block is for our law enforcement program. We're attempting to grow that program into a full-time program. It's been part-time. So this year you made the commitment to fund uh, to make it, uh, attempt to make full-time. Andrew Waldron, uh, the teacher in law enforcement, has put together this, this proposal. For us to have the students counted in our reimbursement rates it has the program has to be approved by a vote of the board and it's also presented to the high school so that then they will grant credit to students who take it so I ask for your approval of this uh, PTF which we have not had in law enforcement previously hope to get uh, freshmen and sophomore students interested and pique their interest and have them take the full program as a junior or senior. Is that the one that's called Spike Draft? Yes, yes. the one that's called Spike, yes. So I have one question on mm -hmm. it. So I'll move you want a motion first? Yes, I'll let's move do that. Second. 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 Moved by Leon and accepted by, or uh, seconded by Kevin. Okay, to accept the, the motion of the Spike program as presented. Now, Jackie. So, uh, down where it says assessments. Mm -hmm. Uh, just the last uh, item, it's called Intangibles, Demonstrating Moral Fiber and Ideals of, I, I imagine it's LE stands for Law Enforcement. Law Enforcement, um, it, It's not a measurable goal, uh, uh, measurable item, so I, I would just suggest that uh, the person just, uh, instead of having an <coughs> intangible, have something very tangible. It could be a, uh, an essay. Something that could be graded, but 10 percent. Well, since the instructor of this class is present tonight, and you're going to be introduced to him during my presentation, uh, I would be pretty sure that he has heard your message and will consider it. Let's put him on the hot seat. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I think Jackie's got a point there. You, you've got to have in the assessment portion. You got to have some measurables there. So. I mean, I, I understand the concept of, of what he's what he's looking for. There, he certainly wants to be able to see these students demonstrating the the ideals and the and the moral fiber of law enforcement. That it would be could be a skit. Could be nothing. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions on this? I would just comment that <coughs> I question what intangibles meant too. Maybe we need some kind of formal essay or, a, or an element that covers integrity that can actually be measured. Yeah. I don't think it's our job to tell a teacher how to teach a class. That is Jim's job, and we shouldn't be getting involved in this kind of debate. If we could, we could do this with every teacher. That's not what we're here for. Okay. That's my opinion. 
those certainly can be expressed by our yep. our superintendent we'll director. Certainly pass yeah. on the recommendations, and uh, suggestions. I'm I'm wondering how does the information of this get out to the students for signups now? Because um, this will be second will, semester. We'll go to the counselors at uh, the high school, and uh, the word you know will be pursued that way. We'll start it with, and uh, Mr. Walden will actually become the promoter for that program as he already is. Mm -hmm primarily through the guidance counselors. It's my understanding there's a similar program, a boot camp program that's run. Is it an after school program? Mm -hmm. It doesn't direct towards um, law enforcement specifically, but it has somewhat of the same uh, type of... Uh, you mean like the Green Mountain Cadets? Maybe that yeah. is... Yeah, that, we had that presentation yeah. at the middle school. Okay. Mm -hmm. at the uh, Mount Anthony. But this is strictly for high school. It's not this is for high school. This is for... School. Um, okay. If you remember, our programs are geared primarily towards juniors and seniors, and we're prohibited from having um, freshmen in our long block classes. With some exceptions, we can have sophomores, but um, the short block the PTFs the, um, are designed for uh, freshmen and sophomores. They're a 55 minute long class, and to hopefully sell the program and let them see the uh, and, and what often happens is students will take multiple short block classes during their freshman and sophomore year as kind of an exploratory to see what they might want to do uh, a deeper concentration in as a junior or senior any other questions or comments on this yes only when the, uh, the question was asked about what ALE mean they need to be spelled out, that's all. Okay. And anytime you have some something in there to represent something somewhere before in the document, it should be abbreviated in terms of, of what it's going to be represented at, well, in, in terms of this particular job description. Okay. Anybody else? Then can I have a show of hands of all in favor of uh, this uh, short block class as presented? That is unanimous. Here we go. Thank you. Okay. Get back to the uh, agenda. Payroll finance board. There we go. <coughs> Superintendent's report. Thank you. Good evening. Um, last month we had three new staff members present to introduce you to them and we couldn't get everybody here so we have three staff members to introduce to you this month and I like to put them before you so you can put a, a face to the name of who you hired and the first gentleman up is the gentleman who have already been speaking up he's our new law enforcement teacher Andrew Walden Andrew please stand up and uh, again as you know I believe that a good teacher should be able to uh, speak from the top of their head and pair themselves. Uh, so, Andrew, we'd like a little brief description of uh, what you've done in the past and what's brought you here to the Creative Island Center in Vermont. Good evening. I'll, I'll keep it brief. Thank you for having me here tonight. Sorry I couldn't be here uh, at the last one. I'm, I guess I'm hitting puberty late and I had some wisdom teeth come in and uh, yeah, those, I got those yanked out. And uh, plus, I know the Patriots are kicking off here shortly and this is New England and I'm sure you guys want to get there. Uh, my name is Andy Waldron. Um, I'm a product of the Keystone State, Pennsylvania. I uh, went to college, Temple University. Uh, after college, I moved to Miami. I was a police officer in Miami for 16 years for the city of Coral Gables, uh, which is a jurisdiction within the, uh, the, 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 the Dade County area. Um, I left early to, uh, to kind of get out of that nonsense and moved back to the Keystone State. I took over a brand new program at Bethlehem Area Vocational Technical School called Protective Services, which was law enforcement and firefighting. Um, I had three people signed up in 2004, and by the time I left, it was uh, a standing room only class. I had 35 kids in my morning class, 35 kids in my afternoon class, and probably uh, another 30 or 40 on a waiting list trying to get in. So uh, my goal is, through these three fine administrators, uh, with their support, is to try and get the same type of deal going here. Uh, I, I know we won't have the numbers to draw from, but we will definitely uh, do our best in, uh, in doing that. So I'm looking forward to the challenge, and um, 
you know, I, you know, I'm the quiet and reserved one in the building. No one really knows I'm here, and uh, we're uh, we're gonna try and uh, try and turn this into something. Good. So, thank you for having me. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. I've got one. <laughs> Andy, um, this is an aggressive uh, program you've you put together for a short block. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's very aggressive, and, and I do wish you a, a success because yes, I think these are the type of um, skill sets and, and I think attributes we'd like to see in, in some of our students. So I wish you all the success with that, and as well as the, uh, the law enforcement program that you're, you're developing for, you. for lawn blocks. Um, do you intend to present uh, or propose anything in the area of firefighting as well, as you did in Pennsylvania, or are you just focusing on law enforcement? Focusing on law enforcement, and the reason being is I found with all those students that were in that program, 99% of them were there for law enforcement. Uh, as we, you know, whether or not we are aware or not, uh, over 50% of all fire departments in this country are volunteer. And uh, it begins at an early age, 16, to become a volunteer firefighter at 16. You have to go through their certification process. Um, there, a lot of times the kids aren't looking to do it as a full-time job because the career is just not there because it is a volunteer you know, basis. So they tend to take you know, the kids that were the firefighters were in other programs but still did their firefighter program. They didn't want to do it full-time with me and miss out on learning. Uh, like up here you can learn forestry or, or you know, auto tech or something along those lines, but still do the volunteer side. So I found that it was, even though we still stayed with protective services, it was almost strictly law enforcement to begin with. So we just tried to tie in as best we could at that point. I think it would be the same type of deal up here, trying to tie in firefighting and law enforcement. I think you'll find that most of the kids that are volunteer firefighters are already in another shop and enjoy it that way. Yeah. That's probably safe. Okay. okay. Good. Well, good luck with your program. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I, yes, Leanne. One question. Just the, the prerequisites for the, uh, the course, and uh, I don't know, uh, being you know, offered in the school, it says potential students should have no prior criminal records or excessive disciplinary referrals for educational institution. That sort of, I mean, I don't know whether some out there has got it or not, but it says that uh, if the direction is that take the class to be a law enforcement, are you taking the class to learn about law enforcement? It's, it's to put them towards, or put them into law enforcement, and I agree 100%, you shouldn't have a criminal background. Some of the stuff that we're gonna be teaching is law enforcement sensitive, and I don't wanna make a better criminal. Right. I wanna make a better citizen. <laughs> and to have a student that has a, a criminal record, it, it, it defeats, it's kind of, it's, it's just like a slap in the face to everything that we're trying to do. We're trying to show that these are great kids. I mean, I, if, if it was up to me, I, I think every shop here should have that requisite, no criminal record. Because let's, let's face it, the job market's tough as it is if they don't start you know, tying it down now. I always tell my kids, what you do today determines who you'll be tomorrow. And if they don't start learning that now, then, then they're going to be out because it's going to keep them out of a career in almost anything now. Yeah. So this I, is, I, I, this I, is not I, a new requirement of the law enforcement program either. They would always interview their students and the, the or we're, we're training them for a career, um, and they wouldn't be eligible for that career if they had that record. Exactly. So it it really would be pointless to put them into and, the yeah, program. Yeah, you know, if you think that your record's expunged at 18, it's not expunged at law enforcement. There's been people that we've found 14 years old that, you know, even if it's just that, it's still, you know, yeah. it's still that mark. So, uh, yeah, as far as that, you want to put them in law enforcement, you want to get them there. We also want to make great citizens. You know, and that's that's another shining example for the CDC. <coughs> what we're turning out, we're not just turning out, you know, the great product we're doing, and uh, we want them to be exemplary and, and stand out citizens. So I, I wanted to get that part on cap TV. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, the okay. way I like this way, you get a million dollar education for free. You might as well take advantage of it now and, and, and go with it. So yeah, very good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you can tell, he's shy and bashful, and. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, next, we have Caroline Bartlett, <coughs> and I want to tell you that Caroline, when we hired her on an emergency uh, license, she has recently been awarded a provisional license in engineering uh, from the state of Vermont. So, Caroline Bartlett. Hi, I'm Caroline Bartlett. Um, I grew up in North Bridge, Mass. Uh, I graduated last May from uh, MCC in North Adams. Um, I'm a Um, and guide my seniors with their senior process. I'm really excited to get involved with that. Um, 
<laughs> thank you, Carolyn. Carolyn, yeah, thank you. Any thank you. questions, sir? No. You have a challenge. Certainly not not teaching before, and you have a uh, you have a very important topic of you know, the engineering uh, program. It means a lot to us here. So, good luck with it, Carolyn. And our uh, new uh, technology manager, uh, Sherry Spangenberg. So, Sherry. <laughs> How about where you're from and where you worked prior? Okay. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania. So <laughs> Thank you. So that includes all staff members currently working that you have not met. You know, between last month and this month, you've met everyone that we hired this summer, and uh, we're very pleased with the results so far. Um, I told you in an email last month that we had a break-in at the school store. Actually, the high school was broken into, and they broke into the school store. Um, I received word this afternoon, I have to give credit to the Bennington Police Department who did not give up on this at all. And uh, they kept pursuing it, and particularly Officer Cam Grandy, who uh, also works here, uh, does our details here during the day, pursued it. And they did make an arrest this afternoon, and they have a warrant out for another suspect. And uh, I just want to thank them for, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't a large robbery, but uh, in, my, in, in my estimate, you know, as far as money, but that didn't uh, seem to mean anything to them, and they pursued this to its end, and I appreciate that. So mm -hmm. thank them for continuing that when make others sure, might have given up. Make sure you thank <coughs> them for the board's tone as for sticking with that. Yeah. We appreciate it. I will. Thank you. Um, Last month I asked you for uh, an ad hoc committee of the student information system. We have not called that meeting yet because... I'm not confident yet that I have all the information that I want to present to you. So I want you to know that that will happen sooner rather than later, but that it has not been forgotten. Uh, last month, I passed out to you, no, it was in the Dropbox, student, um, the sheet looked like this. You're going to get one on the top of... Um, this pertains to class size. Do you need one more? Got one more. No. Everyone's got mine. Oh. I've got mine from yeah. last time. Uh, there you go. So are these the same? These are the, underneath is all new. Okay. Underneath is all new. I, the top two sheets are what I gave you last month so that you can, you can read it. You didn't get one? No. Yeah, we got extra. Okay. If you remember side, that it, it really doesn't um, tell you the whole picture. So I worked with um, Bill Swisher, and he's here tonight also, to produce the documents that are in the rest of this, this document. If you look at the first one, I think this gives a clearer picture for you. You, you, know, you want to know how many students are before a teacher in each block. And it's complicated <coughs> because you'll see, as I go through this, um, Students don't often stay the entire time, and there's an ebb and flow of the students coming and going during that block. And there's also um, some of our teachers, and you'll see as we go through this, are the Monday equivalent of the small um, one-room class at a schoolhouse, that they have multiple levels of a program going on at the same time. And first one is actually pretty straightforward. So you see that Medical Professions 2 runs for both Block 1 and 2. There's no interruption. You see that big block that has number 12 in it. So that's a 155-minute block, and there are 12 students in Medical Professions 2. Then you see Block 3, Emergency Medical Introduction. That is a PTF. That's a short block class. That's 55 minutes. There are 15 students in that class. 
Block four, this teacher teaches medical professions one. And that's an 85 minute block. And there's 13 students in front of the teacher at that time. Now, if you remember, this is semester one. Semester two, medical professions one will go 155 minutes. Medical profession two will go the 85 minutes. And it averages out to the uh, the 120 minutes that it has to have on average for a school year to count as a CTE class. So that's that's one of the straightforward ones. Eh? Is there's no? We go to the next. Okay. Can I can yep. I ask any questions? What's two A and three A in reference to? Nothing in this teacher's schedule. But okay. as we get to some others, there there will be some A's and B's that show where. Uh, Teachers are com students are coming in at a different time. In, in the applications down below, where it says MP one twenty five and negative twelve. And yeah. yeah, what that means is last end of the school year, twenty five <coughs> students did sign up for medical professions one, and uh, they lost twelve students somewhere in the process between a student selecting to take it. They either got scheduled out of it, scheduling, you know, conflicts, scheduling conflicts, or took another class, or okay. did not come back to school here, but that's what that refers to. So you'll, okay. you can see that the, and that's fairly typical on, on applications. Next page. This one has a little bit more complicated. You see Computer Academy 1 and Computer Academy 2 are running simultaneously. So there are same students in there but they're working on different parts of the curriculum. It runs the full 155 minutes, the double block, but 13 students are only in there for block one, and 10 students for block two. Three students leave that class at the end of the first block because of scheduling conflicts or other classes they need to take. So that's what that dotted line tells you. So when we're building full-time equivalents, there's not 13 there that period, it's something less than that, that however that averages out. Block three, uh, their PTF, create a computer, there's 13 students in it, but at the same time, there are two students in there taking Computer Academy one. And you can see that class runs over into, into a long, even longer time. Block four, artificial intelligence one and two running at the same time. And you can see the number of how many students are actually in that class from both of them combined. So this is, I, I think this gives you, I don't want to go through every one, but, um, you know, I asked Mr. Swisher to put this in a format that I think that you can see a little bit clearer because when you look at the, from the, the first two pages of what we submitted to the state on October 15th as far as class size, that's how they have to see the report. And that's how our funding comes. But it doesn't really answer the fundamental question that you've asked me is how many, what's the class size? How many students are actually in that classroom in front of that teacher during that time block? So I don't know what the wish of the committee is. I don't know if you want to refer this to the education subcommittee to come back with recommendations or, I mean, that's just one suggestion I have where we can address this. Uh, at a full committee meeting. We're going to have to make decisions on, on what you're going to do on, on class size, um, what classes you're going to run, which ones you're going to support um, by March at the latest. Uh, Mr. Swisher will probably panic when I say that because the high school would want to know probably even earlier because registrations will begin February, Bill? January 2nd. January 2nd. I mean, wow. we're under no obligation to run something just because students sign up for it because, I mean, you saw what happened when you look at how many sign up versus how many actually come. But we, we, we want to make, if we're going to make a decision to not run something, it really, it does our reputation as a school better with the high school. The earlier we make that decision, whether it's a difficult decision or not, or we commit to something and see whether we can continue to grow it, whichever way you want to make that decision. Uh, the earlier we do it, uh, the better. But you have all the information in front of you now. 
uh, in two different formats. And if there's another way that can make it clearer for you, uh, please let me know. Have you tried running things in different blocks? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have to say Bill gets pretty creative, sometimes a little too creative for, for my opinion, but uh, Bill, I have to say, I believe is motivated to getting as many students into a program as possible. Let me, I want to call your attention to one in the back. Um, these pages aren't numbered. So if I go to, it's the second to last page. I mean, careful not to name teachers here, um, but programs. And you can see, this is, this is the prime example of uh, the one-room schoolhouse with multiple grade levels going on. This teacher has three different uh, subjects going on at the same time in block one and two, and actually multiple levels of that going on at the same time. So it's independent work. It's a lot of computer-based work. Um, I'm not convinced that that, from a curriculum point of view, this is the best way to do it. Uh, but this is what keeps the program running. We're very flexible. Uh, Caroline's another example of a, a really convoluted schedule to keep students in there, uh, to work with the sending schools to make it, uh, to adjust time blocks so that students can avail themselves of what's offered and, and not the other way around. This is only when it's offered and you're out of luck. Though oftentimes, especially with a double block, there's only so many blocks during the day you can move it. And we did reverse a couple this year on the suggestion of the high school that would might make it work better when, uh, when they do the scheduling and start to look like where everyone gets blocked out, which won't happen until late spring. So. Anything you want to add to that, Bill? Did I cover that? Well, when you uh, asked about scheduling, we actually are fortunate in that we have four relatively distinct blocks. Uh, I know tech centers in this state where students are arriving and departing every 30 minutes during the morning and during the afternoon. I don't know how they possibly do it. We do it with uh, as much flexibility as we can while still maintaining Sanity. It's, a, it's a complicated process. Yes, I think <coughs> the education committee should meet I do. on these. Okay, we'll schedule a meeting. I think that's a good idea that, that you do that and review that um, with any recommendations. Um, it's, it appears it has to happen before even our budget, budget gets voted on, which is unfortunate. But let's, uh, yeah, let's move forward with that. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. It is complicated, but it is necessary as well to, in order for us to get the student enrollments that, that we do have here. Bill, we appreciate the work you're doing here. And we appreciate the flexibility that our staff is, is uh, working with. The one room schoolhouse type of uh, environments. It, it does. It's a little more of a task to have to present two to three curriculums at the same time. And requires requires more preparation, requires more flexibility, work. and uh, if you, have, you know you're, you're teaching something and three of your students are get up and leaving in the middle of the block. It, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, it can be a little. It takes a little while to get used to. No, nope, we do appreciate that. Um, last. Yeah, Lynn. Well, well, I was just going to say, uh, when the uh, education committee go and review that, that in the in the class size policy piece that that you're going to be looking at. Remember, we just talk about look at trends for over three year time period and mm -hmm. the direction that they're going in, and and uh, that's a recommendation to say whether it's going up or down and whether we want to take any action or not. Not the necessary that. Uh, anything's going to happen, but we want to bring that before everybody so that we can put uh, proactive measures in place to try to either boost something or say we need to be doing something else in that area. Following up on that, I think the Education Committee would 
probably want to look at the three-year data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that should be available then you know, for that meeting. So you'll, <coughs> you want to check in with, with Jim to make yeah, sure he's got that yeah. ready before you schedule it. on the sheet already. Yeah, that's right. Any other comments on that? No? Next item. Yeah. I have one more item in my report. <clears throat> one of my goals given to me this year by this committee was to continue going through the Schiller report and making movement on the recommendations contained in the report. One of the reports is reorganization, realignment of front office personnel. And let me refresh your memory. We have um, three and a half, or had three and a half workers between the business office and the front office. We had business office assistant, we had an office manager, we had a part-time data person, and a full-time attendance clerk. Uh, our attendance clerk uh, resigned and moved away, gave us the opportunity to make the shift. So what the Schiller report said was that we were not overstaffed in the front office staff, we just weren't be utilizing them to cover everything that we needed to cover. So the proposal that that I have tonight is we're still going to have three and a half staff members by the time we're done, but we're going to do something that hasn't been happening, and it's giving administrative support to adult ed. For the part-time position that was um, data is going to be at nighttime doing adult ed, and I have um, four new job descriptions that I'm going to present to you tonight as part of this reorganization. My recommendation is that you take them, you read them, we put them as an action item for the December uh, school board meeting. I have met with all the individuals involved personally, privately. They have received these. They, they, they know the changes that we're, that we're looking at. Uh, so there's a new job description for the business manager that reflects uh, a change there. A new job description um, for, let me get the title right. I also have copies of all the old ones so that you can, at your leisure, read over them. And um, so business manager, business manager assistant, which we currently have, but now have a have always had, but we now have a new job description for it. Position that I'm calling uh, confidential secretary to the administration, which you previously called the office manager, and student data and services clerk, which is the combined position of um, attendance and data. So, um, and I want to you know, thank. Uh, Mike, and I want to thank um, <laughs> Matt, I'm go block here. Uh, Stephanie. Stephanie, thank you. I want to start, thank you uh, for their work uh, on this to help uh, orchestrate this, get this done. Um, so I will. So we should read these over and then yeah. come back to discuss them right. at the next meeting. Correct. Okay, with any questions or concerns. Right, I, I mean, we can answer questions tonight, but you're just getting, they are in the drop box. They went in there this afternoon. I did that this afternoon after I met with everybody involved, and uh, then we released them to the drop box. Okay. I'm sorry. The business manager's down twice instead of the Yeah. In the drop box, the business manager is listed twice. Instead right. of the assistant? All right, okay. we'll, we'll get that, that corrected. Yep. Thank you for bringing that up, Jack. Some of you are much more observant than I am. Thank you. These are marked draft, and they're dated with today's date, just so that we won't get confused. And And then I will be proposing schedules, uh, time schedules for these people, something that we didn't have before here. 
uh, it was, you know, what is your starting time, what time you're done. There's going to be much more of a published schedule that includes here's when your break is, here's when your lunch is, here's your starting time, here's your ending time, with the goal being um, spreading out coverage of the front office uh, as much as possible so that we're bridging into the evening position, which will help me repair immensely. I just wanted to make sure that this was going to, or whether you had planned to, you probably have, because this is going to come with an art chart. So the, an art organizational chart to show yeah. everything right. out there. I was just going to pull up one to see whether it was on the set, the website, so we can look at it. But yeah, I haven't yeah. completed that yet, and I, I honestly uh, didn't know if I wanted to wait off until we approve job descriptions and I, I can give it to you in case there's any changes in this but uh, I have been working on that because that's also a very dated document. So that concludes my report for this evening but if you, know, you have questions I wouldn't wait till next month. Feel free to call me, email me. If you got suggestions on something that you think that should be tweaked on this or you're just um, confused by anything that I'm telling you here tonight, um, I expect that there will be questions and I'll be happy to communicate with you on that whenever you're preferably either come in and see me, call me, email me, write me a letter if that's what your choice is. But. Okay. That's it, Mr. Chair. Okay, good. The chair reports the next item on the agenda. Thanks, Jim. Um, I just want to report on, on two things. We did, <coughs> Jim and I did attend the, uh, the school board association conference back at the end of October, and I think it was a combination school board superintendent conference as, mm -hmm. as it had last year. We went up for the, the first day only, traveled up and back. Um, Basically listened to keynote uh, addresses. Um, we did have uh, a luncheon where the new Secretary of Education spoke to uh, the audience, everyone, and she's, um, I believe, from Dartmouth University. She comes from a yes. uh, curriculum background, working with Dartmouth. She's... Uh, but had been a principal in Vermont. Okay, yeah, yep. had been a principal in Vermont. Um, she's pretty excited about her, her new job and her new role. She didn't have a whole lot to say about that other than she did share with us her philosophies on, on education and what she was hopes to, to ha see happen here in Vermont. Um, and then we, uh, we, we had a number of presentations from, uh, from other schools, primarily around the, uh, the same theme and that's um, the new, uh, it's an, another new regulation and, and the law uh, escapes me, the, the number of the law, but it deals with um, three items. Uh, the first is personalized learning plans that they're hoping to adopt here in the state of Vermont. Um, personalized le uh, learning plans begin at the middle school level and they're looking to make sure that every student has one and, and implements that and works towards um, developing that with counselors, with teachers, um, professionals. Um, and then that ca they carry that plan throughout the, the rest of their secondary education um, time. And uh, <coughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting to see that come, in, come evolve because the students actually start taking control of what it is they want to learn, how they want to learn it, what they want to pursue as careers. I think that um, it has some promise for, for this school, for this institution, to uh, assist uh, down the road and be involved in, in those type of things. And that's something that we're talking about in strategic planning and as to how we, we're going to address that. The, another item that is, is hot on the, the ticket is 
the concept of job shadowing, uh, internships or co-ops as, as we call them here. And they're really looking for more of those experiences to take place. And again, that's something that the Strategic Planning Committee is, is looking at and addressing. Um, we are <coughs> certainly um, in favor of that here at this building. We have a co-op coordinator that, that uh, works that. However, um, we think that probably in, in the, the 9 through 12 experience, that should be broader. There should be more participation. The state feels that way. They think it's a, a tremendous uh, educational opportunity for students to be involved in these internships, to be able to get out into the community, work firsthand. So that's why you hear us addressing things such as what will they bring with them, their attendance record, their grades, their skills, their soft skill sets that they've learned here when they go to on programs like that. So the, the state has a, a thumbs up on, on that type of um, uh, future for, for our students. Third item, I don't quite recall what the, the hot topic was, but um, I'm thinking that it was, you remember? Can't, no. be, can't be too hot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we did go through the, uh, the presentation from, from the state. It was, it was very interesting. Um, it was, it was controversial. It was something about enacting these by a certain amount of time, too. It maybe had to do with student data and, and, and reporting of student data. But um, many of the, of the leaders, the superintendents, the principals that were in attendance were concerned. They, and they always get concerned whenever there are, are state directives or you know, mandates that come out. But, um, and in the, these two cases, I think they're, they're right on with the future of our students. The other thing I want to report on is how we're doing with the, the meeting with the selectmen. And we had a, a budget meeting here last Monday, or last Tuesday, uh, with a combination of Mount Anthony, Bennington, the town of Bennington selectmen, and then Jim, uh, Ricky, myself, and Stephanie sat in. And we did a round table from all the boards as to how we can interact and, and how we build budgets. Jim did an excellent presentation on zero-based budgeting, which we're looking to, to implement here in the school. Um, it was received well. It was, um, it was a pretty good presentation from both the SVSU components and the CDC, as well as we had some interesting presentations on the town and how they build their budgets and everything that, that they're uh, responsible for. Um, and we walked away with some ideas about financing equipment rather than purchasing them outright, for example, things of that nature. We meet again, we meet on a monthly basis. They're open meetings, they're held at the veterans home at eight o'clock in the morning on Wednesdays, usually the second Wednesday of the month. You're welcome to attend any of these meetings. And uh, this is um, an area where we're going to continue to reach out to the town, to the town leaders, and try to um, give them our ideas and give them our issues and see what we can do to work together in solving those in the educational community. And uh, hopefully you saw the front page of the paper with <coughs> Joe Krasik's picture in our big CDC sign in the background. So we got good publicity out of that as, at the same time. And that's all I have for the chair report. Any questions? No? We have this for the seating, but he's not here. We oh. got that from the Mont School Board, so. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, we have a presentation then for Ricky. He'll be back after he bags the big buck that he's out there <laughs> looking for in camp. <laughs> Um, okay, do we have any other business from the board? We, we do Motion to need. adjourn. Motion to adjourn from Francis. Second. Seconded by Gloria. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. <coughs> Thank you, everyone, for showing up this evening. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it the next meeting.